Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and aloha. My name is Paul Fletcher, and I am a certified master teacher from the Tao Academy, the Institute. And I'm very grateful to be connecting with you today. It is the 11th day of April, and it is 2019. It's a Thursday. And today, we're going to be chatting about Tao science and manifesting with the power of the heart and the mind. And I'll be uh, working with some of the wisdom that is in the first Tao Science book written by Dr. and Master Shah and Dr. and Master Rulin Shu. <clears throat> and I'll give you a little heads up on who these people are and what their purpose is, the wisdom behind them and the, and the uh, uh, credentials, if you will so that you know that what is being shared has roots in science. Science is very important. It helps all those that need factual data and factual information to be able to make heads or tails of this thing we call life. And unfortunately, <clears throat> there is not enough, and this is my personal opinion, there is not enough trust and faith in our beloved Creator. And there is far too many people out there that have a um, disconnect, a disconnect from the Creator, and they need tangible facts. And it's no different when it comes to the uh, countless uh, hundreds, millions of Tao healing miracles that have been uh, manifest in the last 20 years by both Master Shaw and many of the uh, those who have received the Tao blessing abilities. Because so many, they simply can't wrap their hand around it. They don't know how to validate it based on their current constructs, based on their current levels of understanding. And so what has been birthed as a result of the inability of people to trust that there is a divine, trust that there is a, a, a higher love, <clears throat> is they, um, Tao Science was born. Shen Medicine has been born. And uh, these are... Uh, how would you put it? Manifest validating sources that describe what can't be understood by the, uh, what should be understood by the heart as uh, aspects of the divine working in the physical world with uh, obviousness and trust. But since uh, many souls are unable to um, comprehend from that level, then Tao Science and Shin Medicine have been born to bring about real-world statistical data validation. And so today, what I'm going to be focusing on is um, excerpts from this book here. It's called Tao Science. You can see on the bottom here, it's written by Dr. and Master Shah and Dr. Ru Lin Shu. <clears throat> and um, in talking about this, bringing to you, uh, I'll be reading the sentences piece by piece, and then uh, adding a little bit of practical real-world representation to that. We're going to be focusing on manifesting, creating. And for many of us who have worked with the concepts of mind over matter, we, uh, we have the ability to, um, to take some responsibility for what manifests in our world instead of being uh, from, uh, acting from a place of irresponsibility and saying, I have no idea why this came to me. It's not my problem. It's not my fault. It's their fault, their fault, their fault, their fault. That's what we're going to be talking about today is shifting the perspective uh, from a scientific point of view. So I hope you enjoy that. <clears throat> so let's check in with who's joined us so far today. Welcome Samba, Aloha, Pranja. Welcome Sanjay. Welcome Regina Volt. Uh, Aloha, Kristen. Welcome also Archana, welcome Gina, uh, Aloha and welcome Dolores, <coughs> Aloha Kristen uh, Strachan, welcome Becky Stryker, Aloha Griselda, thank you for coming, welcome Monica, welcome also Elizabeth Carrasco, uh, welcome Joy Weber, Aloha Jennifer, Sherry Berry, Sherry Behe, Behe. Uh, welcome, and Aloha also to Archana Dev, uh, welcome Ulrich. Thank you all for joining. Great to have you here. And welcome, Elizabeth Carrasco Lara. So it's wonderful to have so many beautiful souls joining me. I hope that you click the share button, let other people know about this. <clears throat> there is so much wisdom that can be learned 
if we just know where to look. Um, you know, I want to kind of go off on a little tangent here and then come back around. But, you know, myself personally, I've been on a spiritual journey since the age of 18. And I did not want to get boxed into one perspective, one thinking this is the only way and the right way and blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> I found that that is very limiting. Uh, you know, uh, one of the things uh, Master Shah says, who, who is my current spiritual teacher, uh, I say current for a reason, is that, you know, divine flexibility. What does that mean? It means don't square your head. That's also a favorite phrase he has. Don't square your head. Be open to all possibilities. And the reason he is my current teacher uh, is because he doesn't have boundaries and he doesn't say my way is the only way and this is the only way to think. He honors all perspectives, all belief systems. And I appreciate that very much. And he recognizes that many people uh, need to open their heart more to our beloved divine creator and all the different ways the divine is serving humanity, trying to uh, assist humanity to develop themselves and become more enlightened, if you will, become more love. Uh, many people, unfortunately, have very limited beliefs and very limited perspectives, <clears throat> and so they need facts. And therefore, he birthed Tao science, uh, as well as Shin medicine. So what is Tao science? Tao science is the science of the nature, power, and significance of Shen, Qi, and Jing. Shen is soul, heart, mind. Qi is energy. Jing is matter. So let's go from reverse. Jing. This is documented in the Tao Science book. I recommend that you go to purchase it. It's called Tao Science, the Science of Wisdom and Practice of Creation and Grand Unification. If you just go to Amazon or Barnes and Nobles or wherever you go to Books A Million, uh, and I'm not selling the books, I'm just telling you for those who are interested where to get it. Um, and just type in Tao Science and look for the white cover. It's pretty simple. <clears throat> in any case, Jing, Jing is matter. What are you made out of? You're made out of 70 to 90% water, flesh and bones. That's matter. That's Jing. Okay? We're all made of matter. What is energy? Well, that's what runs in between the matter. Because when you look under everything under the microscope, the matter is bouncing around, little specks here and there, and in between is the energy. And that's why the Eastern philosophies work with Qi. They do Tai Chi and Qigong and acupuncture and pressure, acupressure, massages, uh, herbs to adjust the energy of the body, which then assists in adjusting the matter. And the Western model, they just work with the matter. They cut the matter, cut out the cancer, cut off the uh, arm or the leg. Uh, uh, they adjust the matter with chemicals. Um, the perspective is very different in the West than it is in the East. So one adjusts the energy, one adjusts the matter. So we have Shen Qi Jing. I've just described Jing, and I've just described Qi. Qi is energy, life force energy that runs through everything. <laughs> All of this is pretty easy for just about anybody to accept. There are some out there that don't have enough uh, education uh, to recognize that energy runs through everything. And I say that not in a derogatory manner, but if they say there's no such thing as energy or prove it to me, it's already been proven a million times over the last hundred years. They just got to go do a little homework. So there is these manifest things that are uh, ir irrefusable. Then there is Shen. Shen is a Mandarin Chinese word that uh, uh, splits off into three categories, soul, heart, mind. And that's where we're going to start this pathway uh, uh, into the Tao Science book here. And so I'm on, for those who wish to follow, I'm on page 85. The title is called The Power of Heart and Mind. And uh, welcome, Audrey. Welcome also to Bradley Ayers. Aloha, Bernard. Uh, welcome, Becky. Dolores. Aloha, Tania. Uh, if I missed your name, forgive me. Thank you for coming. Thank you for clicking the share button. So... I'm going to read, comment, read, comment, read, comment. You're welcome to comment as well. <clears throat> In Tao science, the heart, the heart is the receiver of information. From where? The mind is the processor of information. Great. The heart's the receiver. The mind is the processor. Where did it come from? Where is the information coming from? 
heart and mind determine the nature of our physical reality. Look around you, okay? You may have uh, children, you may have pets, you may have a job, you may not have a job. You may be happy, you may be sad, you may be angry, you may be uh, uh, financially sound, you may be in financial turmoil. This is your personal reality. Okay? It's very individual. And what this says is the heart and mind determine the nature of the physical reality that we experience and our unique and specific life that we have. Understanding and using the power of the heart and the mind is critical for health, relationship, finances, happiness, and success. Now, previous wisdom says mind over matter. This goes to a whole other level and layer heart over mind over matter and there's a layer above heart soul what was the first question uh, what provides the information soul we're coming to that so this profound wisdom has been known for millennia what is millennia millennia means forever it's not like this is new information but it is for some people this profound wisdom has been known for millennia by sages saints Buddhas and spiritual masters. Unfortunately, many people have not reached a deep realization of the power of the heart and the mind. Therefore, many people are not able to use the power of their hearts and their minds in a positive way. So if you're one of those that has a lot of suffering in your life, it's because you haven't used your heart and your mind in the most proficient, highest and best way available to you. This has caused much suffering. Aloha, Susan. Welcome. <clears throat> Tao science gives us scientific insights and understandings of the power of the soul, heart, and mind. We believe that true understanding of the power of the soul, heart, and mind can be an important turning point, and a turning point, not only for your life, but for all humanity. So this is not just about you, because if we can get more people to... Uh, scientifically recognize that it's not just hocus pocus when they say mind over matter that it can be scientifically validated that where you focus your heart and your mind actually has a positive impact on your specific reality because your reality is drastically different than your brothers and sisters drastically different than mine drastically different from the person sitting right next to you we all have unique realities and we actually have control in many ways over that so if we recognize this it can release much suffering and it can empower us to become a powerful creator and manifester of a life that we really want <clears throat> titles of the next section are you an observer or a creator oh, this is a really good question are you observer or are you a creator what's an observer an observer is, life is happening to me, and I'm liking it or I'm not liking it, but I have no control over it. That's an observer. What's a creator? I am responsible for everything that happens in my life. I choose to take responsibility. <coughs> watch my, my soul. Watch my heart. Watch my mind. Pay attention to my thoughts. Am I a conscious observer or an unconscious observer or a conscious creator? You have to ask yourself this. I think all of those watching today are a combination of both. We unconsciously do a lot of things uh, which create unconscious problems in our life. And then we try to consciously do the best we can. So this goes on to say your soul is, is this is very important, one sentence secret. You might want to write this one down. Your soul is the content of its information your soul is the content of its information it contains many possibilities and many potentials <clears throat> in Tao science they would say your vibrational field has countless vibrations and states yet your physical reality usually consists of a very specific and certain outcome so let's describe this a little differently. <clears throat> you're sitting in your chair right now. And you may have a cell phone right in front of you, right? Like my cell phone here. Maybe you're watching on your cell phone. Literally, 
right all around you, either in the apartment complex or the house, are another four, three, four, five, a hundred cell phones. Out on the street, another hundred cell phones. And somehow, when a signal is sent, you get a very unique signal only to your phone, where only you are connected, except for the government listening in. It's only you connected, okay? The neighbor's cell phone is unique to them. Your cell phone is unique to you. And there's literally hundreds, actually thousands, actually millions of signals crossing in the air at all times. Okay, now that you have a visual of that, let's tie it into what Dr. Master Lin and Dr. Master Shah are saying here. <clears throat> in science, validated, they can see millions and millions and millions of waves crossing over each other, just like cell phone waves crossing over each other. And what they are saying is that although there are millions and millions happening literally right in front of our eyes, right in front of our personal experience, we only see one or two or three. Grasp that. They're all there, but we only see one or two or three. Just like there's millions of cell phone signals all around us, but we only pay attention to the one that comes in on our phone call. Okay, you got that? Now let's move forward. So how does a single concrete reality emerge from all of these possibilities? Because all of these are happening right in front of us. We could be seriously wealthy. We could be have the highest and best health. We could manifest exactly what we want, but very often we don't. The measurement problem in quantum physics involves the question of why our world appears, appears to be definite. It appears to be, it is exactly what I see in front of me. It appears to be definite, while scientifically speaking, it could be any number of possibilities. The main issue is the measurement problem and how observed reality, what we actually see, is manifest from the vibrational field. How what we see becomes manifest. What you will find in quantum physics is truly breathtaking. As it turns out, you are not a passive observer. Scientifically validated, you are not just somebody watching things. You are not a passive observer of all this. You are creating the phenomenon you observe. You are actually creating exactly what you're looking at. <clears throat> whatever enters your field, whatever enters your life, you are actually responsible for and creating it because that is what you have chosen to focus on. What, uh, how does this happen, she says. Let us explain the manifesting process in Tao science. The first thing you need to know is that to observe a quantum phenomenon, you must receive vibrations from what is being observed. So to see it, you have to receive it. It's like in order for the cell phone to ring, in order for you to actually get the ring in your cell phone, it has to connect. It has to be able to be turned on and receive the signal. So in order for you to actually see and observe what's coming into your world, you have to be attuned to that signal. <clears throat> in quantum physics, <clears throat> detectors, this is important, in quantum physics, there's a thing called a detector. They actually have machines. They detect. Detectors are used to receive these vibrations that are happening everywhere. A detector is an instrument specifically designed to absorb vibrations and show visible, visible, and measurable changes as a result. So this, this sees these vibrations, and it measures it, and then it graphs it out and says, it looks like this. So they can actually say, this is exactly what this vibration looks, sounds, smells, feels like. Detectors do that. For instance, a camera is a detector. It sees fields of light, captures it, and shows you an image accordingly. Photographic film or digital detectors are used to detect visible images. X-rays are detectors. A radio is a detector. <clears throat> it receives radio waves. It's just a wave. You can't see a radio wave just like you can't see a cell phone wave. But these different devices detect these frequencies of light or frequencies of sound. It receives waves from television stations and shows the programs. Our eyes, our ears, nose, skin, and tongue are all detectors. Pay attention. This is where the rubber hits the road. 
<clears throat> our eyes detect light, our ears detect sound, our nose detects smells, our skin detects temperature, our tongue detects taste. Our heart is also a detector. Our heart can feel, our heart can, can gather information, just like our eyes gather information. Many times our eyes see something, but it's not really what we see. Think of a magician trick, right? <clears throat> so we assume if we saw it, it must be accurate. Not true. The second thing we need to know about quantum phenomena is that the kinds of detectors that we use, touch, taste, feel, sound, da 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 when most of us don't use our heart, and where we place the detectors determine what we observe. So these detectors, sight, touch, feel, sound, smell, this is what we have been using to validate our phenomena. This is, this is what I smell, it must be real. This is what I see, it must be real. This is what I hear, it must be real. Out of the millions of lines of information coming, these are our detectors and therefore this is my reality, I'm looking at the screen. What's your reality? Are you outside? Are you detecting noise from the birds? What is your detectors? Your reality is very different than mine. For instance, if you are using a normal camera, you will see images of visible light. If you use a special camera, you can see infrared light and you will catch images that are different entirely. Just think of an aura camera, it captures different aspects of light. We all have had the experience where we place our camera at the angle and we direct our camera greatly affecting the result of the photograph. So how we use ourselves in detecting life can change not only how we receive information but how we manifest what's outside of us. If we can change how we receive information, we can change what we manifest because what we place our focus is what occurs. In summary, the kinds of detectors we use and where and how we place the detectors determine what we observe. Scientifically, determine the phenomenon we observe. Because of this, quantum phenomena depends on us. Okay, now, scientifically, what they did to figure this out, they have detecting machines. <clears throat> they turn the detection machine on and they have the camera look through a slot. And then they have the camera look through a different slot. When the camera looks through one slot, the photon, the little, uh, little speck of energy, little speck of matter, can be seen. But when they look through the other one, this one disappears and it's over here. Well, there's only one photon in the room. How can it be from here and then go over here instantly? It's in wherever we look. This is what has been discovered by science. Whatever you look at, it appears because it's always there. So these, this photon is wherever the focus is spent. This has been validated by science. <clears throat> wherever we put our intention is what we have. Are you suffering? Where's your intention? Where's your focus? Is it on, uh, my finances suffer, therefore I have more financial suffering. You've heard this before. It's not the first time you've heard it. <clears throat> yes, Sam, this is a double split slit experiment. True, go look it up on the internet. I might not have explained it exactly accurate, but the intention of the experiment, which has been validated hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times, says whatever the camera looks at is what it actually sees, even though it can be in any place. There's only one, and yet it can be here, it can be here, it can be here, depending on where you look. That's how life is. What are you looking at? What are you focusing on? Okay. Our detectors for the human body go beyond sight, touch, sound, feel, taste. Our detectors include our hearts and our minds. Quantum physics reveals to us a profound and most empowering truth, one which Buddha, Jesus, and other spiritual teachers and masters have taught a long time. Buddha taught Sheng Yo Shen Sheng. Probably didn't say that right, but it translates to all the image we see and all the phenomena we experience come from our heart. In the Bible Proverbs 4.23 it says, Above all else, guide your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Many other spiritual teachings offer similar wisdom and guidance. In bold print, we create our own reality. 
our own hearts and minds manifest our physical reality wait for it our hearts and minds manifest our physical reality from our souls oh now let's see how Tao science validates that <clears throat> one of the famous debates in quantum physics is whether an electron exists does an electron exist very famous debate if you are not observing it we can answer this question easily in Tao science if you are not observing it, an electron exists in what's called a possibility. If you, uh, but it does not exist in our reality. So it exists as a possibility, but not in our reality until you choose to focus on it. Boop, then it exists. Therefore, everyone's reality can be different. Why? Because all possibilities exist in all time. So you've heard this before. If you've done any degree of metaphysical research, all possibilities exist. You can manifest whatever you want. Just focus on what you want. Blah, 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 blah. Well, I focused on a million dollars, but it didn't come to me. Right? How many of you have said that? <clears throat> Tao Science says, did you focus on it long enough? Did you change your perspective? Was there something that knocked it off your trajectory? Right? Where do you place your focus? Where's your heart pure? Our soul is the carrier of message. In the first sentence, go back to the first sentence, or the one sentence secret here, see if I can find it again. Your soul is the content of its information. I ask you to write that one down. Your soul is the content of its information. What does that mean? It means your soul is the carrier of all messages, which includes all possibilities. And what are the messages that you have given it in this life? What are the messages you have given it in other potential time frames? What are the messages that it has carried from the divine, its original source, what are the messages it has carried that the news channel that constantly pours negativity into our ears, our eyes, right? Our ears, eyes, these are receivers. Isn't that what was just said? These are uh, uh, devices, right, that receive information just like touch sound, everything, and they're receiving negative information. Our soul is the carrier, the repository of all of these pieces of information. So this combination of all of these pieces of information, positive and negative, including our negative thoughts, our gossiping, our uh, woe is me, poor me, everything that happens to me, why can't my life be better, blah, 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 right? Or I deserve, I am worthy, I am love, God loves me unconditionally. These are positive statements. Why can't you say those? Where we place our focus on dictates our manifestation, dictates do we see the electron here or do we see the electron here? So this is the scientific validation of it. Therefore, everyone's reality can be different. We all have this experience in life. Different people have different experiences, ideas and feelings about the same event. So they can be watching the same event, but they have different ways of perceiving it, talking about it, experiencing it. In scientific studies, researchers try to control all the detectors so that the experiment can be repeated. We must completely understand that our physical eyes and modern technology are limited. So much of what exists is invisible to our physical eyes. So much of what exists. Our eyes see a range from C to F. It does not see A and B, and it does not see beyond F. <clears throat> Dog's ears can hear a lot more than what we can hear. Uh, there is so much that we cannot see, and yet we walk through life with such massive egos, thinking that exactly what we observe, what our detectors comprehend, is exactly accurate, and we are right. What huge ego we have. It's amazing. We must completely understand that our physical eyes and modern technology are very limited. So much of what exists is invisible to the physical eyes, 
and to even our most powerful instruments, since we can only observe certain things and can only manifest certain things. Why can we only manifest certain things? Because we limit ourselves with our observations by not allowing our detectors to operate in full synchronicity with our soul. Our detectors are soul, heart, and mind, which lead the energy and matter. Soul is the carrier of information. Are you a steward of your information? Are you removing the negative and adding more positive? Are you doing forgiveness practice to remove the negative? And are you doing good service to add more positive? Because these are the messages that lie at the level of soul, which then cause the heart, the heart which is the carrier of the message, delivers either a positive or a negative message to the mind. The mind gives the orders to the energy and the matter. You're starting to get it in, in its increments that it's being taught? So think of your life as a movie. Quantum physics tells us that what is in your life movie is actually manifesting by your own actions, thoughts, intentions, speech, hearing, smelling, uh, uh, feeling, movement, and more. You are not only the observer, but you are also the actor. Uh, you, but you are also the producer and the director of your own movie. So what do you want to create? You are the creator of your own life. Let's talk about the power of the heart. Heart includes the physical heart and the spiritual heart. Your spiritual heart is the receiver of information. It is the receiver of information. Repeat, my heart is the receiver of information. Where does the information come from? Your soul. Your soul is the carrier of all information and all possibilities. Is there good possibilities? Yes. Is there unpleasant possibilities? Yes. All possibilities exist. Your heart receives the information, but if it comes from your soul, then it stands to reason that you want to clear your soul level blockages and add soul level positive observations and positive experiences. Your spiritual heart corresponds to the detectors used for observation. In quantum physics, it includes your thinking. These are your detectors. Your thinking, your feeling, your seeing, hearing, smelling, and all this uh, assist in this process. The one sentence secret about the power of the heart is what we receive in our hearts determines what we manifest. What we receive in our hearts, not our mind determines what we manifest. So it's important for us to be cognizant of the calmness of our heart. Are you a person that has anxiety? Are you a person that has depression? Are you a person that's always sad and full of grief? This is what you're receiving in your heart, therefore that's what you are manifesting. But what caused it? In Master Shah's wisdom and teaching, if we have uh, fear, anxiety, anger, sadness, grief, anxiety, depression, if this is predominant in our life, our soul is carrying these messages. It's realistic and possible that we may have earned this, uh, these negative messages by causing fear upon others, causing others to be angry, causing others to have anxiety. How could we cause others to have anxiety? Maybe we said unpleasant things to them. Maybe we threatened them. Maybe we took their job away from them or a loved one, and therefore they had anxiety about where they're going to live and so forth. Maybe we have done very unpleasant things, or maybe our ancestors have, and therefore these negative messages reside. These messages then show up in our heart, which manifest these in our world. How do we resolve them? Again, we go back to love and forgiveness offer love all around you at all times to yourself especially forgive especially ask for forgiveness for whatever you are suffering ask for forgiveness because those me negative messages didn't end up at your soul level accidentally and they didn't go to your heart accidentally and they didn't cause your mind to bring it into your energy and matter accidentally okay all possibilities exist take responsibility Everything in your life, including your body, your health, your relationships, your career, your intelligence, 
family and every aspect of life comes from your heart your heart activities which include thinking intention speech hearing smelling feeling movement taste and more decide what happens in your life your heart plays a crucial and determining role in the creation and manifesting of your reality what kind of heart you have and where you put your heart determines your life <clears throat> this process is similar to television the program you watch on television is determined by the station that you choose do you want to watch the news or do you want to watch a happy life about uh, blessings from heaven or something like that right if you set your heart on love the physical life and your reality will experience the fullness of love but to, to set your heart on love does not mean uh, I want love I deserve love God please give it to me no it means I give love to everything I give love to the grass as I walk by I give love to those on the street I give love to those that say very unpleasant things to me and about me when you give love constantly then anything that's negative just bounces off <clears throat> your heart then manifests love by giving love love comes to you so let us move into practice at this time shall we there's so much more of course this is from the book Tao science <clears throat> I recommend that you get it I recommend that you digest one or two pages at a time because it's uh, it's very um, accurate from a scientific perspective and it does its best to bring it into layman terms uh, I'm able to <clears throat> break it down a little bit more and it becomes even easier to grasp uh, uh, taking you apart sentence by sentence paragraph by paragraph but I do recommend you get it as incredible wisdom in there <clears throat> and it's very good for those in your um, in your energetic field that like to naysay and like to uh, question your spiritual choices it's very good for those type of personalities the people that we love but like to poo poo on our spiritual uh, perspectives um, but don't give it to them and see here I told you so you give it to them with what with love I love you there may be a time in your life where this could have value to you this is my gift to you I hope someday you open it uh, no attachment right if you actually say it like that they might actually open and if you say here this will prove everything I've been telling you that's kind of a closed heart approach okay all right so let's do a practice let us place our hands this is hand power uh, in either a prayer position or dropping our left hand in front of our heart center and close your eyes become fully present part of attuning to our heart is becoming fully present close your eyes <clears throat> take a deep breath into your lower abdomen be conscious of your breath release the day Breathe in and out one more time and start to visualize in your heart huge light loving light the light from your beloved creator your beloved creator is always sending you huge love and light open your heart to receive it visualize your beloved divine creators love radiating to your heart <clears throat> we will invite all the beings of light to join us please repeat after me dear my beloved divine creator dear all of the beings of light including beloved Jesus and Mother Mary beloved Buddha Kuan Yin beloved Krishna Ganesha Vishnu Muhammad and all beings of light angels healing angels archangels masters ascended masters all the lamas gurus sifus and saints those serving the light they're the soul of beloved mother earth the Sun and the moon heaven I love you all honor you all respect you all I open my heart to you all
I invite all these beautiful beings of light to sit in my heart center and to bless my heart to more fully open and align to positive energy positive messages I ask all of these beautiful souls <clears throat> to assist in this practice today to help me to release forever negative thoughts negative words negative actions please also help me to remove negative messages that I may have earned by offering unpleasant thought words and actions to others in previous times that I do not remember I am very grateful for any service you are willing to offer and now we will do a forgiveness practice from our heart dear all souls in all time all the souls of my co-workers my parents relatives brothers sisters to the souls of all of those I've ever loved all of my relationships they're the souls of all of the people I have ever interacted with in all time my name is state your name three times Paul Fletcher Paul Fletcher Paul Fletcher I wish to offer my greatest love to all of you from my heart there may have been times which I have not given you love in which I blamed you argued with you was very angry at you I may have spoken very unpleasant things about you gossiped I may have said very unpleasant things harmed your livelihood because I spoke negatively about you maybe you lost a relationship because I lied maybe you lost a job because I lied and this harmed your finances maybe I or my ancestors took away from you things that were so important in your life that you were full of anxiety fear and more unpleasant feelings and emotions possibly I or my ancestors have done such unpleasant things that you experience depression or anger honestly I do not remember doing any of these things but if I or my ancestors have done these things to you if we have caused you to suffer financially in relationship in your emotions if I or my ancestors have caused you or your loved ones to suffer in physical pain because we made mistakes harmed you physically whatever mistakes we have done that could have caused you any form of suffering from the bottom of my heart I sincerely apologize and ask your unconditional forgiveness I deeply and sincerely regret if I have done any of these unpleasant thoughts words or actions I recognize that it is possible because my life has not been perfect I have had physical suffering I have <clears throat> had emotional suffering I have had relationship blockages and suffering I have had financial blockages and suffering and now I recognize that it could be because I may have brought these unpleasant experiences to others in time that I do not remember and if I have caused these kinds of suffering upon you or any soul anywhere in time I deeply humbly and sincerely apologize and ask your unconditional forgiveness I recognize that to ask for your unconditional forgiveness may not be enough that I need to do more in this life
to think more positively, to act more positively, to not gossip, to not judge in my mind, to not judge silently, to not judge in words. I need to make sure that my thoughts and words and actions are in alignment with this request for your forgiveness so that you know I have learned any lessons that I was meant to experience. Please forgive me. I will continue to improve my positivity. I will continue to release the negative perspectives that I may have held on to. And by your blessing of forgiveness, more of these negative messages can be released, allowing me to be more positive, to manifest in my world positive thoughts, positive words, positive actions. By your forgiveness today, I can be a better person to help others to be happier and healthier. I am so grateful for the opportunity to receive your forgiveness. I'm honored to receive your forgiveness. To all of the souls, continue to repeat, to all of the souls that have offered me very unpleasant words, thought very negative things about me, gossiped, told others unpleasant things about me, thought very unpleasant things in their head. All of those who have offered very unpleasant actions towards me, I now recognize I may have initiated the reasons why you brought these things to me. I may have been unpleasant to you first and you reminded me. I may have thought unpleasant things about you first without even realizing this and you reminded me. I may have done very unpleasant things like I have been on the receiving end of first. And if I initiated any of the unpleasant things that all of you have brought to me, once again, from the bottom of my heart, I sincerely, sincerely apologize and ask your unconditional forgiveness. I deeply regret these actions. Regardless if I had ever initiated them or not, I wish to offer all souls in all time my unconditional forgiveness for the negative thoughts they have thought towards me, the negative words they have offered into my energetic field, and the negative actions they have brought into my world. I no longer wish to fixate on these. I no longer wish to give them any energy. I no longer wish to have them in the energetic field of possibility in my soul I wish them to be released permanently and forever so that all that is left is positive energy positive messages so that I can manifest a loving positive world I release all souls in all time the negativity they may have offered towards me and I ask them to release me of any negativity that I may have offered to them I love you. Please forgive me. I forgive you. And now let us implant these positive messages by chanting, I forgive you, you forgive me. Bring love, peace, and harmony. Let us put these positive messages at the level of soul, which will positively impact our heart, which will feed positive messages to our mind, generating energy and matter to manifest in our world positivity let us begin I forgive you you forgive me bring love peace and harmony I forgive you you forgive me bring love peace and harmony
visualize that your soul is just being washed with these beautiful messages the negative messages are flying away positive messages are entering your soul field of possibilities all of these souls that had been harmed before are forgiving you releasing negative messages visualize so much positivity coming to you I forgive you you forgive me bring love peace and harmony I forgive you you forgive me bring love peace and harmony <clears throat> I forgive you you forgive me <coughs> bring love peace and harmony I forgive you you forgive me bring love peace and harmony visualize all souls of humanity receiving your love receiving your forgiveness I tell you millions of souls are bowing to the ground in gratitude for your forgiveness because they know they have harmed you they know they have left negative messages along upon your field <clears throat> and many millions of souls are grateful for your recognition of your mistakes they are forgiving you see the light getting bigger open your heart I forgive you you forgive me bring love peace and harmony I forgive you you forgive me bring love peace, and harmony <clears throat> I forgive you you forgive me bring love peace and harmony I forgive you you forgive me bring love peace and harmony three more times I forgive you you forgive me bring love peace and harmony I forgive you you forgive me <coughs> bring love peace and harmony I forgive you with all your heart you forgive me bring love peace and harmony last one with all your heart I forgive you you forgive me bring love peace and harmony <clears throat> hallelujah
how, how, how. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Very important to offer our gratitude. Let us give more positive messages to our soul. Thank you, our beloved divine Tao and Source. Thank you, the soul of Tao Science, for the incredible wisdom that came through today. Thank you to Dr. Master Shah and Dr. Rulin for receiving the wisdom and disseminating it to humanity in such a beautiful and profound way. Thank you to all the beings of light. Thank you to our own souls. Thank you to all the souls who have offered us their unconditional forgiveness, such huge mercy, such huge blessings, such huge release of negative messages. Thank you for the wisdom that we could ask forgiveness and further release negative messages. If you came in late, do not do yourself the disservice of not watching the first part. Do yourself the great service of watching from the beginning because the wisdom will serve you for the entirety of your life. I'm deeply honored and grateful to my teacher, Dr. and Master Shah, for allowing me to serve you in this way. I also thank Facebook for giving me the medium for uh, delivering this wisdom to you. Love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I invite you to join me Sunday, 6 p.m. Hawaii time. I'll be chatting, chanting along with all those who join, love, peace, and harmony for those with the condition of cancer. It's an excellent opportunity to serve unconditionally, to remove negative messages, to create positive messages, and make a difference in other souls' lives. Okay, So join me uh, Sunday. Uh, you can come to my timeline. You'll see my posts, 6 p.m. Hawaii time, 9 p.m. Pacific time. <clears throat> midnight in the Eastern time zone. It's 5 a.m. in the UK, 6 a.m. in Central Eastern Standard Time. It's 9.30 in the morning in India. It's 2 in the afternoon in Australia, 4 in the afternoon in Kiwi Land. Love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I will see you then. Bye-bye, everybody.